this, we are honored to have with us Professor Prateek Sharma, the Vice Chancellor of Delhi Technological University, who will share his insights and thoughts with us. And I'm very thankful for him to giving us a space to celebrate National Mathematics Day. Mathematics is the queen of sciences. And the number theory is the queen of mathematics. And Ramanujan happens to be the prince of mathematics. It's very important that, you know, uh, the popularization of mathematics in society is very much important. And the schools and colleges and institutions like D2 have an important role to play. Because what happens is that, uh, as I mentioned, the mathematics is the most purest of all, you know, uh, sciences. But at times at the school level, you know, the approach that we follow uh, is quite exhibitic and theorem based and therefore you know the application of mathematics we miss out the application part and uh, the students especially they feel uh, uh, scared of numbers that is what basically we need to you know remove from their minds and if you see conveyance of any uh, a very simple subject is a topic of instantaneous velocity remains unresolved or we can't just explain without the uh, the tool of calculus that we need to have you know and physics is incomplete without mathematics and engineering is without incom it is incomplete without physics we just don't get entangled in solving the typical integral problems or the differential problems or the derivatives but what these derivatives are doing to you what the integrals are doing to you i mean that is what one should uh, be able to know exactly what is the physical aspect, physical significance of these uh, mathematical concepts. And unless and until we are able to relate uh, these abstract ideas with real world, the appreciation somehow, obviously if we see, uh, you know, the statistically speaking, the geniuses are very less in number. You will have one Ramanujum be being produced in once in a century. But, you know, we need to bring the masses in the mainstream and for that, you know, uh, the popularization of mathematics and relating the real world problems and using the tools of mathematics to solve the problems will only uh, help in popularizing mathematics and taking away the fear of numbers from the minds of the students. Next, we have a distinguished speaker and we are privileged to have Professor C.K. Ghosh, former Director of Innovation Cell at IGNO, to deliver a special lecture, enriching us with his vast knowledge and experience. Srinivas Ramanujan was born in Irod. At that time it was a village. I have been there. I have been to his birthplace to see his birthplace and pay my homage. In fact, that house still exists. I am talking of course about 2011 when I had been there. I had also been to Namakkal, a place where he had spent some time and if you go to Namakkal, it would bring tears to your eyes because the house where Ramanujan stayed has been demolished and now it's a shopper stop. Now this is the house at Kumbakonam. This was renovated by Shastra University. This is not really a justice to the legacy of Srinivas Ramanujan. You can see that small passage. So that leads to a place, a courtyard kind of a place where the bust of Srinivas Ramanujan has been kept. Well, I don't mind kneeling down before him, but then his equations are also kept beside him. The equations should have kept at an eye height so that it can be easily read, but that was not the situation. So he said that 1729, there are several numbers which can be expressed as the sum of two cubes in two different ways. And 1729 is the least among them. How? Now 1729 is 1728 plus 1, that is 12 cube plus 1 cube, and it is 1000 plus 729, which is 10 cube plus 9 cube. And that is not the only significance of 1729. There are number of significances. I do not have time, but one such I'll mention here. It is a harshad number. Now, what is a harshad number? Jo harsh jagata hai. That is, if the sum of the digits divide the original number 1 plus 7 plus 2 plus 9 is 19 and it divides the original number because 19 into 91 is 1729 please keep verifying 19 into 91 is equal to 1729 so it is a harshad number now there are many harshad numbers i am trying to pay a tribute to srinivas ramanujan and of course we cannot go to every such area but numbers being his favorite 
Uh, I'm just giving you, sensitizing you with some numbers. Now this Harshad number, if it is a two digit Harshad number, there are many. 21 is a Harshad number, 2 plus 1, 3, 21 divisible by 3. 24 is a Harshad number, 2 plus 4, 6, 24 divisible by 6. 27 is a Harshad number, 2 plus 7, 9, 27 is divisible by 9. But as the number of digits keep increasing, Harshads get lesser and lesser. So 1729 is a four digit Harshad. It's a four digit Harshad and the sum of the digits is a prime. There are many more significances. I'm feeling tempted to tell them, but uh, let me stick to Harshad number. Now, have you observed the significance of the string of years from 2020 to 2025? 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 0 is 4. 2020 is divisible by 4. It's the Harshad number. Okay, I'm, I'm sparing 2021 for the time being. 2022, 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. 2022 is divisible by 6. I'm leaving out 2023, I'll come back to that. 2024, 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 4 is 8. 2024 is divisible by 8. 2025, 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 5 is 9. 2025 is divisible by 9. So they are all Harsha. And 2023, the present year, we are going to have only how many more days? 12 more days. So salute that year. It's a very, very special Harsha number. 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 3 is 7. And there is algorithm, all mathematics teacher would be knowing that there is algorithm available for every number from 1 to 12 except 7. Except 7. But 2023 is a very special Harshad number because 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 3 is 7 and 2023 is divisible by 7. Verify that. I, I may be telling a lie, uh, you always verify. And the quotient is 289, which is a perfect square. So 2023 is a very, very special Harshad number. And then who was left out? 2021. 2021 is definitely not a Harshad number. 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1 is 5, and it is not divisible by 5. But 2021 is a remarkable number. 43 into 47, verify, is 2021. 40, so it is a semi-prime. 2021 is a semi-prime because 43 into 47 is 2021. You leave the first two, what remains? 0 to 1, that is 21, which is 3 into 7, so it's a semi-prime. You take out the 0, what remains? 2 to 1, 221, it's a semi-prime, it is 13 into 17. Take out the second two, what remains? 2, 0, 1. It is 67 into 3. It is a semi-prime. Take out the last one. It is 202. It is 101 into 2. Again a semi-prime. And out of them, 221 again is a very favorite number of mine. Because I try to relate mathematics. Like this particular thing. I just tried to relate. I didn't see it anywhere. I had sent it for publication somewhere. Uh, this coincidence between of, of the numbers from 2020 to 2025. Uh, now what is... 221 famous for house number of Sherlock Holmes, 221B Baker Street, 221B Baker Street. So this is a very, very special number. And what is 221 into 5? 1105. 1105 is called a Carmichael number. Now why I am bringing Carmichael number? Uh, a Carmichael number can be expressed as the product of non-repeating prime factors that is the first condition now 1105 is already 221 is there so 13 into 17 is there the third will be 5 5 minus 1 is 4 1104 is divisible by 4 13 minus 1 is 12 1104 is divisible by 12 17 minus 1 is 16 1104 is divisible by 16 and so is Ramanujan's number Ramanujan's number is 19 into 91, that is 7, 91 is 7 into 13. So 7 into 13 into 19, all primes. 7 into 13 into 19, 1729 minus 1 is 1728. The first factor is 7, 7 minus 1 is 6, it divides 1728. 13 minus 1 is 12, it divides 1728. And 19 minus 1 is 18, it divides 1728. In fact, Ramanujan's number could have been dethroned 
I'm repeating the word, could have been dethroned by one of its divisors, 91. Because 91 is 64 plus 27, that is 4 cube plus 3 cube, and it is 216 minus 125, so 6 cube plus minus 5 cube. 6 cube plus minus 5 cube, so 91 can also be expressed as sum of 2 cubes in two different ways, but unfortunately one of them is a negative number. And there are many such things related to Ramanujan's numbers. So I'm trying to pay tribute with whatever was his forte, the number system, and rightly he was called the wizard of numbers. If, in fact, please, uh, if many of you must have seen Ramanujan's magic square, if you have not seen, see that. And uh, it is a four by four magic square, and you know in a magic square, horizontally, vertically, and diagonally, all the sum will come out to be same. But there are several other fe features of this Ramanujan magic square. And you know what is the first row of Ramanujan's magic square? 22, 12, 18, 87, the four numbers. 22, 12, 18, 87. The sum turns out to be 139. And that also he related, he was a very religious, a very sp spiritually minded person. And he described, he, 139 became his favorite because 1 is 3 to the power of 0, 3 is 3 to the power of 1, and 9 is 3 to the power of 2. And powers of 3, the base he identified with the trinity of existence, Swarg, Marth, Patal, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, creation, uh, restoration, and annihilation. In quantum mechanics, there are three operators, creation operator, and null operator, and annihilation operator. So this trinity of existence is related with the magic square by his name. So let us quickly play a game. I wanted to play a game with these uh, young friends, but you have to be a little fast. Uh, and any, anyone can try, please. And I not only mean the young friends. Uh, so you provide me the cube of any number, between 1 and 100. I'll give you the cube root immediately. Cube of any number between 1 and 100. I'll give you the cube root immediately. 729. 729 is 9. Anyone else? Quickly. Pardon? 15. Anyone else? Quickly, quickly. No, no, one at a time. I have to concentrate. 297? One, I, I couldn't hear. 297? One double four two six two two six two sixty four last one huh? uh, last one last one yes one one please three three double zero seven six Three, three double zero, seven six three, sixty seven. I I think I passed the examination, huh? Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, how is mathematics related to life? So somebody uh, uh, that you will be able to do yourself. Now I'm not joking. You'll be able to uh, really. You'll be able to do yourself. Now, how is mathematics related to life? Now, somebody asked me, the word I have not mentioned here, uh, asked me sarcastically. And a plus b whole square equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square, well, it is known to everybody. Even somebody who is not doing mathematics remembers that. And one do not have to rote learn to remember a plus b whole square equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square. So he asked me how we, you say mathematics is all pervasive. It is a way of life, how we apply a plus b whole square formula in our real life. Now, the answer to this question, uh, one has to define the expression application. What do we really mean by application? Applying a plus b whole square. Really, a homemaker working in the kitchen, uh, 
द हाउस मेड और एनी पर्सन एनी क्विंट एसेंशियल पर्सन इज डेफिनेटली नॉट अप्लाइंग ए प्लस वी होल स्क्वेयर डायरेक्टली ए प्लस वी होल स्क्वेयर फॉर्मूला बट स्टिल हाउ इट इम्पैक्ट्स अवर लाइफ नेक्स्ट स्लाइड प्लीज so we have to define the word application in the sense that you have to see mathematics as a canvas you have to see mathematics as a canvas where mathematicians have painted several relations several equations several foundations several logics several lemmas so on and so forth why so it is not progressing next slide ha huh. so and now we have to pick up from them now i am picking up something uh, i am applying my mobile phone i am i am i'm drinking water uh, this is a cylinder so the quantity of water which is contained in it is definitely governed by mathematics in fact the sound system the level of intensity again it is governed by mathematics you are not doing that but you are using that but when you use that you have to remember that mathematics has been applied to create that now one important application or one very uh, common kind of problems we have done in our arithmetic course are this unitary method time and distance time and work and so on and so forth now where if the price of one pen is 10 rupees then the price of five pens is 50 rupees uh, if you walk 1 uh, km in 10 minutes then you will be walking 2 km in 20 minutes but does it happen so in like life In fact, the first one kilometer, the underfoot condition may be very good. For the next one kilometer, the underfoot condition may not be that good. So, this unitary method or uh, time and distance, all these things are some kind of abstraction which we have sort of imbibed in our life, and what we feel that life is linear. The operations of in life is linear. This is called linear variation. If y is proportional to x. here something by something that is price by the number of pens is a constant price by number of pens is a constant or distance traveled divided by time is a constant which is actually not in real life situation so we assume operations in life to be linear and if you look into the formula a plus b whole square perhaps it gives us the first try with non linearity now sir was talking about differentiation integration such higher order operation differentiation is a linear operation i am not going to elaborate on that but please try to verify this differentiation is a linear operation integration is a linear operation complex conjugation is a linear operation but squaring is not squaring is not a linear operation if an operator if if s is a squaring operator if it changes a to a square then a of a plus b should be a square plus b square only there should not be the interference of the 2a beta so it gives you the first try with non linearity it gives you the edge to think that there can be non linear processes in nature next now uh, let us see how mathematics meets life there can be many examples i have selected very few you know the indian standard time is done with reference to mirzapur many people think that is it is ilahabad it's not ilahabad mirzapur is very close to ilahabad and its longitude is 82.58 degree east now 82.58 is taken to be approximately equal to 82.5 and there is a magic in the number 82.5 there is an international law that the difference in time between any two nations should be a multiple of 30 minutes but it cannot be 100 minutes it cannot be 80 minutes like Bangladesh is ahead of us by 30 minutes Singapore is ahead of us by perhaps 2 hours the western part of Australia part etc is ahead of us by 2 and 1/2 hours so it's always a multiple of 30 minutes and 30 minute is equivalent to 7.5 degree because the earth rotates through 360 degree in 1440 minute so per degree it is 4 minutes per degree it is 4 minutes and 7.5 into 4 is 30 minutes so in order to be the reference for the standard time of a nation the longitude should be a multiple of 7.5 and 82.5 is indeed that 82.5 is 
11 into 7.5. So see how much mathematics is involved. And so we are 11 into 30, that is 330 minutes ahead of Greenwich. So can you see Greenwich mean time from your watch? Of course, if it is an electronic watch or the, or the modern day watch, it has to be a normal uh, minute hand and hour hand clock. If you have it, I'll request you to open it. I'm not going to snatch it, just for some observation. Now, the time is about 10.35. 10.35. According to my watch, it is 10.35. You reverse it. You reverse it and think the position of the hour hand little ahead of where it is. So it is 5 minutes past 5. And we are 5 and half hours ahead of Greenwich. So subtract 5 and half from 10.35, it is 5.05. So that is how you see the Greenwich mean time from your watch. It will happen at every point of time. The most significant strength and beauty of mathematics is that it can take many issues into its fold by creation of models. It is not only in physics. Of course, I, am, I being a student of physics, most of the examples that will occur to me will be from physics, like the atomic model is a planetary model. Kinetic theory of gases, that is the gases are moving like hard elastic spheres. So this is again a model. When Prashanta Chandra Mohalanovish uh, made, gave, gave the norms for the Indian Planning Commission, so he had modeled Indian economy, particularly taking the reference of steel already in vogue by the Tatas and all that. So, but mathematics is such a subject, I am not demeaning any other subject, but mathematics is a subject which helps you to model. If you, if you want to study the demography of the country. In fact, the example which I cited just now, again is a kind of a modeling. So that is the basis of mathematics and that's why it is the queen of science, it is the queen of existence, it's not the servant of science. Like I as a student of physics, sir, will definitely remember that in our MSc, BSc days, we had to do a lot, very big derivations, derive Helmholtz H theorem, derive TQ's law. And our worry would have been on the day of examination, would we be able to do that derivation in the classroom, in the examination hall? Why worry? Because we considered mathematics as a servant. But mathematics is actually the queen I am picking an example from physics, but I think most of, of, most of you will try to appreciate. When Niels Bohr had cracked the atomic model by writing that angular momentum is equal to nh by 2 pi. That is his standardized orbits. So that was the lacuna in Rutherford's model. So when he wrote that equation, now left hand side is angular momentum m into v into r. So that is kg meter per second into meter, so kg meter square per second. So on the right hand side, come what may, on the right hand side, come what may, here to write a quantity whose dimension is same. Mathematics is dictating that. Mathematics is telling you that the two sides to, should be dimensionally same. Not only the, they should be same in terms of the product, they should be same in terms of the mass or whatever, but they should be having the same dimension. And the challenge before Niels Bohr was to think of a quantity which defines the smallness of the microcosm. And Planck's constant was such a quantity. 6.64 into 10 to the power of minus 34 joule second. So which refers to the smallness of the microcosm. And more than that, more than that, it had the dimension of angular momentum. Had it not been there, you could not have written Bohr's theory. So it's a gift from the nature, please try to appreciate. It's a gift of the nature that Planck's constant is very small and Planck's constant has a dimension of angular momentum. Bohr had to pick up angular momentum because the other postulate was in terms of energy and these are the only two quantities which remain conserved in a central orbit. So he could not have picked up anything, velocity, linear momentum, no. He had to pick up a conserved quantity, so he picked up angular momentum. Now had Planck's constant not been having the dimension of angular momentum, that relation could not have been written. So this is why mathematics is the queen of science. 
See, I am giving you a very simple fraction subtraction. 1 by 2 square minus 1 by 3 or 1 by 1 square minus 1 by 2 square. That is 1 minus 1 by 4. That is 3 by 4. So it doesn't depend on anything. There can be earthquake, tsunami, flood, anything but 1 minus 1 by 4 will still remain to be 3 by 4. And had it not been the relation, Bama series would not have come. So see the beauty of mathematics. I have written some multiples of 7. 7 into 13, time and again 91 is coming. Uh, 7 into 13 is 91. So 91 is a multiple of 7. Achha, let us add 2, 28. 2 plus 28 is 30. 30 plus 31 is 61. 61 plus 30 is 91. So that is also 91. But what are the significance of this? So, so mathematics tells this. There, there cannot be any uh, aberration from that. 7 into 13 will always remain 91. 2 plus 28 plus 31 plus 30 will always remain 91. Now what is this 2? The 2 days in January, 30th January and 31st January. 28 days in February, 31 days in March and 30 days in April. So from 30th January to 30th April, there are exactly 13 weeks. So the day following 30th April will have the same day as that of 30th January. So Martyr's Day and May Day will always be same in a calendar. 154 equal to 22 into 7. Now similarly, you start from 1st May, go up to 30th September. Go up to 1st October. So 1st May 31, June 30, 61, July 31, 92. August 31, that is, you have to help me, 123. September 30 is 153. And 1st October, one day, 154. So from 1st May, right up to 1st October, there are 22 weeks. So day following 1st October, we'll have the same day as that of 1st May. That is 2nd October, Gandhiji's birthday. And quickly, let us calculate from 2nd October to 24th December. 2nd October to 31st December is 30 days. November is again 30 days, 30 plus 30 is 60, and up to 24th December, 24, 60 plus 24 is 84, which is 12 into 7. So 2nd October and 25th December will also be on the same day. See, you had repented while seeing the calendar of 2022, when all these days were on Sunday. What happened? How But your chutti barbat kiya mathematics. Mathematics ne aapka chutti barbat kiya. Like in this year, be happy, Every all of these will be on Tuesdays, chutti barbad nahi hoga. So, see, mathematics is there in the creation of the calendar, in uh, setting the reference. Certain cases of same remainder. Today is uh, what? Today is 19th December. See, uh, after another, another two weeks, we'll be embarking into the new year, and most of you, will, most of us will not be getting the new calendar, and so we'll be worried what to do with the January calendar. You have to fix some program or something, how to do with, do with that. Now you see, 365 is equal to 364 plus 1, that is 52 plus 7 into 1. And 120 is also equal to 119 plus 1, that is 17 into 7 plus 1. So, from 1st January to 31st December, you go ahead just by one day. And from 1st January to, what is the significance of this 120 up to 1st April, if it is not a leap year. 31 plus 28, 59. 59 plus 31 is 90, 90 plus 30 days in April, 120. So, you go ahead by one day up to 30th April. So, the calendar of 1st May this year, you can verify, the calendar of 1st May this year will be the same of the calendar of the 1st January next year. So, don't worry if you don't get your calendar in time, you retain the previous year's calendar and see the month of May. Same happens if it is a leap year, because up to April, February is within April, so it would advance by two days. And even in the main year, 366 is 52 into 7 plus 2. I'm going a little fast, but I hope you'll be able to appreciate. Uh, so say loud, P.T. Usha. She is our pride. In fact, I say that the number of times Indian national anthem has been played in an international arena for Usha standing on the podium is much, much more then that has happened due to Rohit Sharma, Virat Kohli and Saurabh Ganguly standing on the podium. She is a pride. And I remember in 1984 when she lost the 
400 meter hurdles by how much? 0.01 second. Milka Singh lost it in Rome Olympics by 0.13 second, but P.T. Usha lost by 0.01 second. She was weeping profusely, and I remember that scene. Nambiar, her coach, was consoling her. Edwin Moses had held the record in 400 meter hurdles for eight long years, 1976 to 1984. He was a great hurdler, student of physics, later turned to engineering and then into management. Now, in the 84 was his last Olympics and he was practicing in the same stadium after the two semi-finals. Usha had gone into the final, on the other end in men's 400 meter hurdles, he has gone into the final. You will not find his name as gold medalist in the 1980 Olympics because 1980 Olympics was boycotted by USA, but he had held the world record from 1976 to 1984. Now see how he has organized his hurdle, hurdle race. Yes, next slide. So there are 10 hurdles spread over a length of 315, uh, 400 meters. Now the first hurdle is at 40 meters from the starting line and the last hurdle is from the, is from, is 45 meters from the finishing line. So that makes 350, 315 meters to accommodate the hurdles. And if there are 10 hurdles, like see there are two speakers, one space between them. Huh? You can count the spaces between the, if, if there are three persons, then there are two spaces. If there are four persons, then there are three spaces. So if there are 10 hurdles, there are nine spaces. So space between the hurdles equal to 315 divided by nine equal to 35 meter. Next slide. Now Moses, by practicing, his maximum stride length was 3 meters. Uh, don't ask me to demonstrate, it would be a disaster. Uh, his maximum stride length was 3 meters and his hurdle jumping stride, when he was jumping a hurdle, that got increased to 3.8 meter. That really did not get increased. This is where his coach asked him to practice time and again to bring it to 3.8 meter. Not even 3.9 meter or not even 3.7. Why 3.8? Now there is mathematics behind it. The mathematics is 35 minus 3.8 is 31.2. Now Moses was asked or he practiced himself to maintain his, maintain 12 to 13 strides. He tried with 11, 12, 13, 14. With 11 the stride length becomes too large but less than 3 meters. With 14 it becomes too small. So for his metabolism, it was decided that 12 or 13 is the right number of strides. Next slide, please. Now, if it is 12 and 13, then the length which has to be covered with stride length, that is the length minus the hurdle jumping stride, should be a multiple of 13 and 12. And to be a multiple of 13 and 12, it should be a multiple of its LCM. And 13 being a prime number, the LCM is 13 into 12, that is 156. And 31.2 closest to 35 is the number which is exactly divisible by 156, that is 12 and 13. So he practiced with 12 strides, with 13 strides. If it, if it was 12 strides, then each step is 2.6 meter. If it is 13 strides, each step is 2.4 meters. But he ultimately settled to 13 strides because if you are taking even number of strides, then while jumping a hurdle, you are giving pressure on, say, the left foot. Then for every hurdle, you will be giving pressure on the left foot. But we want the load to be distributed. Like, madam, she must have organized this program by distributing the task to so many persons. He could not give the uh, large chunk of task to one person and less chunk to another person. It has to be distributed. So similarly, our uh, physical fitness serves us the most when it gets distributed between left and right. And that happened if the number of strides was odd. So he settled to 13 strides. So there is so much of mathematics in sports. In fact, there are several other examples, but I'm, uh, I think I'll uh, don't go further ahead. Next slide. Yes. So, so those who are not liking mathematics, in fact, this is the last slide after I have shown how mathematics pervades the area of, say, geography when I talked about Indian Standard Time, 
how it pervades the area of calendar, how it pervaded the area of sports. I picked up examples from physics, from statistics, and so on and so forth. And thereby, while prepa I, I prepared this last slide yesterday, I was recalling 23rd August 2023, when Chandrayaan-3, based on integrated features of celestial mechanics, spacecraft technologies, and cosmological computations, placed its footprint on the moon. And on the other hand, the prodigy Pragyananda was fighting it out with Magnus Carlsen. And on that particular day, he tied, of course, on the next day in the tiebreaker, he lost. So both were riding the vehicle of mathematics. Chandrayaan-3, with all the technological computations, the fuzzy logic of it, the uh, programming part of it, was all mathematics. And Pragyananda on this 8 by 8 square, also applying his mathematical wit. So mathematics is all pervasive. And let us recall, almost four centuries ago, René Descartes, you must have heard his name, in his roles for the direction of the mind, rightly pointed out that mathematics is a science of order and measure and includes beside algebra and geometry, astronomy, music, optics and mechanics. That's all he wrote at that time, more than four centuries ago. But the list is indeed too long. It is becoming longer and is still growing and it would grow with patronage from all of you, not only mathematicians, but the entire academia, the entire existence all over. Thank you very much for giving me a patient here. Thank you, sir. It's an honor to be here celebrating the brilliance of mathematics and legacy of Srinivas Ramanujan and for the fascinating tale of numbers. Thank you so much. To express our gratitude on behalf of SD Public School, we have Ms. Anita Sharma, the principal, delivering the vote of thanks. Good morning to all of you. First of all, I congratulate all the participants who are here and to their school principals who allowed them to participate in this kind of event. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the esteemed Vice Chancellor, Professor Pratik Sharma of Delhi Technological University for organizing a remarkable celebration of National Mathematics Day in collaboration with SD Public School, Pitampura. The event not only showcased the synergy between school and college, but also highlighted the pivotal role mathematics plays in our academic landscape. So Dr. C.K. Ghosh has given us a glimpse of that. And I'm happy to share with you that Dr. C.K. Ghosh has traveled to this place all the way from Calcutta to interact with you all. We also have few more stalwarts with us today. We have Dr. Chandra Moli Joshi, he is Director, NCTS, National Council of Teacher Scientists, which, uh, which has opened the uh, clubs, Har Ghar Pohunche Kalam clubs, and under the aegis of the Department of Science and Technology and Ministry of Science and Technology. And he has also invented a uh, mathematics lab on wheels, so he is also with us. Uh, we have Dr. K.K. Dikshit, he is retired commissioner, but he is a mathematical origamist also. Uh, so, sir has come from UP. We celebrate National Mathematics Day to commemorate the birth anniversary of legendary mathematician Srinivas Ramanujam, fostering an uh, appreciation for the subject among, amongst our students. The joint effort of school and college faculty as well as the active participation of the students contributed to the success of this event. In the current educational milieu, milieu mathematics is the bedrock of various discipline, disciplines from technological advancements to scientific breakthroughs, reinforces the importance of nurturing mathematical skills and knowledge. Through events like these, we strive to emphasize its significance and inspire a passion for the subject among others, uh, all the students paving the way for the future achievements. Our academic relationship with Delhi Technological University is ex exemplified through initiative like this where the synergy between the school and college faculties and that is the learning experience for our students. This collaborative spirit aligns seamlessly with the objective contained 
outlined in the new education policy accentuating interdisciplinary learning and holistic development. The celebration of National Mathematics Day serves as a beacon guiding us towards a future where mathematical literacy is not only acknowledged but actively pursued. So once again we thank the Vice Chancellor sir for fostering an environment where education transcends boundaries and mathematics becomes a source of inspiration and innovation. And in the last I would like to share with all you because small children are sitting here from the class 6 to class 9 that the childhood of Ramanujam was also like you. He also started with the play school. The play schools they were known as peers in the south where the one teacher was used to sit with the half of the dozen of the students and he started schooling there and he was very much annoyed with the teacher. He left the school. He said he does not want to go to the school. In fact, even when he went to the primary wing, he was so adamant to, the go, to go to the school because Ramanujam was always lost in, in his thoughts, his own observations were there and he was not liking that uh, structured system. So many a times the parents had to make the intervention and they had to talk to the school uh, uh, administration to bring him back to the school. But even though he was, he topped in primary, uh, throughout his career, if you will see his mathematics uh, report card also, it was not always 100. So basically he believed not in just doing mathematics but thinking mathematically also. So he was always immersed in the numbers. He always tried to find out something new with the numbers and was used to record his own results in the notebook. His results were never appealed to the people with the limited knowledge. But once he was recognized by a few of the Indian people who referred him to uh, the several other mathematicians and asked him to write to the Hardy, then his real uh, brilliance, his real, real genius came into the light and we all now recognize him. So please don't underestimate yourself even if you are not able to do well in your maths examinations. So that is not the limit. Uh, just fall in love with the mathematics, try to explore more whether it is the numbers or it is the application of the mathematics in their life. So I hope that when you will be going back today, you will be finding yourself enriched. You will be learning here some new activities with the help of when you will see a, ma a mathematics lab on wheels, when you will be able to explore the Rubik's puzzles of 40 different types. And you will also be able to uh, see the application of mathematics in uh, so application of origami in mathematics and learning mathematics. So you will be learning many, and many of the students they have also come with their exhibits. So all of you will be learning from each other. Uh, once again I wish my heartful thanks to DTU for their full cooperation and support and the approval to conduct this program here. Thank you so much.